Sup, tubers? It's your boy, the YouTube reviewer. The YouTube guy who uses the power of weed to review YouTubes, aka Digibro. Today I'm going to be talking about a video by Vinter Gatan. This is a very uh, large YouTuber. He's got, um, how many fucking subs you got, Vinter Gatan? Remind me, I didn't do any research. I'm just jumping right in with the power of weed. And I've got, he's got uh, 843,000 subscribers. So not quite million sub club level, but you know, getting there. And that's because of his strengths as a YouTuber, a music producer, and of course, first and foremost, an engineer. Now, this guy makes the series called Wintergatan Wednesdays, where basically he continues work on this gigantic musical machine that he has been putting together that he intends to take on tour with him and perform with. Now, if you've never seen this man's big music wheel fucking thing, the marble machine, you should go look it up because it's an amazing, incredible video. It's right here in my sidebar. Um, you know, uh, so you can see the exact title, Vintergaton Marble Machine. Basically, he makes this instrument that he plays by crank, and it makes, it makes the noise of, like, a fucking solid, fun pop song. Um, but, like, there you go. Now, it's very, like, inoffensive, fun, poppy music anyone can appreciate, but he's got that, like, deep sub-bass kind of sound in there because he's got real, real crisp recording quality, real crisp editing quality in the audio, you know, before the uh, video goes up, probably, you know. I'm sure that they mastered that audio a little bit. So, he is able to create stuff that everyone can appreciate that it sounds good. It's not so much that it's anyone's particular favorite type of music. I don't think anyone's going to put the Winter Gatan song on like their favorite songs list. It's more about the idea that you can create what is like understood to be good music, which has, you know, a comfortable understanding of music theory and which is, you know, uh, programmed in a way that is satisfying to the ear, but also has little flourishes which involve being created by this machine. There's an element of that all of the sound is acoustic, even though, you know, it might be digitally enhanced or at least enhanced by the way it's recorded. But it's all acoustic instrument and all acoustic sound. So that gives it a unique flavor compared to most of what you're going to hear in modern pop music or just, you know, instrumentals that you hear um, in your day-to-day -day life on commercials or something, you know? Even though this is like the style of music that would be in a commercial, it sounds different because of the instrument being used and the fact that there is a narrative arc of him having to you know, toggle switches and move parts of the machine and have the music sort of, like, die down for a bit while he changes things, you know? Like, all of that plays into the narrative of that this is uh, a, you know, a creation of his. So, after that video, he set about creating a even bigger, better machine that could pull, play a fuller range of sounds and be moved and taken on tour and he could perform with it with his band live. And... This is obviously a, a really fascinating idea as an engineering feat. I don't think anything like this has ever quite been done before. Certainly not by one guy alone in his fucking house. What's interesting to me is not that this man is performing the extreme human feat of creating this gigantic machine and taking it on tour, potentially, What's interesting to me is that he's turned it into a perfect YouTube series. He's figured out a way to make him engineering the craft that would be used for a viral YouTube video into a YouTube video series that people will actually turn up for every single week. And I think he's taken a very similar approach to his YouTubing as he has to his music. He has adhered to sort of the platonic idea of what is a great YouTube video. But he actually understands what makes a great YouTube video. He understands like the core tenets of what YouTube audiences gravitate towards, which in my opinion, are personality and impressiveness. People want to see that you have, like, a unique 
style. You are your own person. You have your own workflow. You do your own thing and your vlogs have a unique voice to them because of that. But also that like what you are doing is impressive in some way. It's like a little above what people can just get from their friends and that's why they'd rather spend time with your videos than with human beings. The segment I'm about to show you basically says it all. I paused the video here because I needed you to see this where he uh, takes this, you know, board that he's putting on his machine, he sticks it on and one of the other pieces falls off. He leaves it in and there's just him walking away depressed and he puts a sad filter and he plays the sad music. He doesn't play the generic sad music that every other YouTuber does. He plays like an original composition, which I really appreciate because I'm fucking sick of the same old sad music gags on YouTube. But, you know, we've got him like doing the sad walk away from the camera thing. Now, if this was a TV production, if this was how it's made, if this was like, you know trying to uh, be a journalistic piece about this guy, if people are, like, making a video about, uh, making a, a short film about this guy who's making this crazy piece of machinery, a behind-the-scenes documentary, well, behind-the-scenes documentary might include this footage, because YouTube is more similar to that style of content, which is more documentarian and just, like, kind of meant to peel back the artifice of what the art actually is. But, like, in a professional setting this would probably have been cut. They would have just had him retake that. But he understands that on YouTube, the culture is self-effacing and to make, you know, to make light of situations to be funny. So he leaves it in. He obviously acted in a way that like, he understood the second it fell off that this was going to be in the video. And so he, you know, was going to act accordingly. All of his lighting is extremely crisp. His editing is perfect. His camera works really fucking solid. This dude clearly has all the best equipment. And he probably learned all of this shit just from watching YouTube. Like, if you watch fellow engineers on YouTube or anyone who makes videos about DIY lighting and setup, I mean, if you have a budget, you can afford to make YouTube videos quite easily. All you really need are some softbox lights and some fucking, like, red cameras, and you're fucking done. You've got the best quality on the fucking website. Watch one MKBHD room tour, and you're done. You know your setup. This guy also has the strange advantage of being Swedish and therefore ageless, and I literally, I'm not sure how old he is. Like, when you see close-ups of his face, he looks like he could be in his 30s, maybe his late 20s. I don't know if he's just tired. I don't know if it's just because he's Swedish, but, like, his face could be anywhere from, like, eight like 20 to 35 and I would believe that he was that age but like in Sweden it's acceptable to have this hairstyle throughout that entire age range and therefore I, I don't know how old he is but he's uh you know like many Swedes before him such as the most famous YouTuber of all time you know has that to his advantage. The Swedes are just willing to wear emo hair for longer than other people and that's why they are beautiful. Because they're just willing to wear emo hair and they can get away with it because everyone goes, well, they're Swedish. So, like, we're not going to tell them, no, you can't do that, you know? I think Winter Gatan gets away with the highly manufactured nature of these videos because of the fact that he is an engineer. Like, that's what the videos are about. They're about, like, extremely precise building. And it makes sense for that kind of video to have extremely precise editing, extremely precise filmography, extremely precise, precise sound editing. You know, like, look at what he's doing here in the sound editor, just, like, showing you the complexities of, you know, the design of this piece. This guy has done his fucking research on how to make music, how to make videos, but the he's more of an engineer than an artist. And that's not to say that he's not an artist, because he obviously is. He has created an art piece of engineering, but the art is not in the music, and it's not in the YouTube video creation so much as it is in the engineering prowess of the machine. It's about creating such a unique idea to engineer a machine that no one had really crafted and like to do it with the most modern technology and sound. That's what makes the machine interesting. Suffice it to say, if Vintergatan's song came on the radio, like 
you would not be that impressed. But you would be impressed to see it being performed by a marble machine. And, like, to a great extent, like, to see something that well-crafted, you know, regardless of whether it hits you on any emotional level, like, you appreciate the passion and talent that went into creating the machine, and that went into, cre you know, making sure the music checked out, and that the videos checked out, and that all of it is, like, good, and, but you're watching it to watch this man build something that you barely comprehend. You're watching it because you get to see a bunch of, like, uh, giant power drills that, like, are programmed by a laptop, like, do ultra-precise cuts in fast motion. And, like, it's got the appeal of how it's made as well as the appeal of a Casey Neistat vlog, you know? Like, and, again, he's not just mastered, like, the lighting and technical setup. Like, he's also clearly watched people who talk about how to vlog, can you know, how to vlog effectively, and, like, copied those techniques, too. So... You know, this guy's making, like, legit content, and he's one of the, probably, I think one of the most interesting voices on YouTube, that someone has found a way to make engineering not just, like, something that comes up in a one-off viral hit video, because there's a, there's a thousand videos exactly like the Marble Machine video, where someone did something, like, really technically talented, and it's got millions of views, and those channels never, like receive the same glory unless it's something they can easily reproduce like say making every disney movie song on your machine this guy did not take that route he did not program the marble machine to fucking play let it go you know he fucking programmed it to play his original song and then just made interesting vlogs with which to you know prolong the exposure of the machine and keep the funding going so he can do a fucking project like this by himself so, yeah, uh, kudos. This is A-plus YouTube content. That's how the YouTube reviewer feels based on the power of weed. All my videos are going to come out at 420.